okay so welcome guys to another video um so today i have the 2015 paper here and i'm going to go to the rest of the paper i already did questions one to seven i believe that was my first video ever so you can go check that out so i won't be doing that over excuse the noises in the background if you hear any so let's go let's see where we are here so question eight items eight to twelve so it says the media is filled with reports of teenagers being distracted by digital technology and neglecting their schoolwork as a result Haldane, a sociology student, decides to investigate this phenomenon at his school, which is located in the countryside. He intends to use interviews to collect the data. Okay, okay so here, question eight asks us, which of the following activities would Haldane need to undertake as part of his research? Um, one, talking to parents and teachers. Two, finding out how many students own digital devices. And three, choosing a sample that is representative of his school's population. I would go with all three. Number nine asks us, which of the following would be an advantage if Haldane conducted interviews? Costliness of, this, of the procedure, wide geographic coverage of informants, considerable depth, depth, depth of the information to be collected, or high reliability of the information to be collected. Now this seems like um, which one would fit best really. Um, I wouldn't go with costliness of the procedure because that doesn't seem like an advantage. And I would go with C really, yes C considerable depth depth of <laughs> the information to be collected because um quantitative research deals with numbers and statistics while qualitative research which um so quantitative would cover like questionnaires and such and qualitative research deals with words and meaning so those would be yes your interviews i guess focus groups stuff like that so quantitative methods allow you to test a hypothesis according to google by systematically collecting and analyzing data while qualitative methods allow you to explore ideas and experiences in depth so for that reason i'd go with c Number 10 says, Haldane found an article entitled Modern Technology Causing Canadian Students to Fail. This article could be useful to his research as it is A, reliable and accurate, B, it can yield sufficient data, C, provides secondary data, or D, provides primary data first of all d wouldn't be correct because that article would not provide a haldane with primary data um and i wouldn't choose a or b because the question doesn't give us or the the little extract up top doesn't give us um enough information to conclude that the his source here modern technology causing canadian students to fail there isn't enough 
information to prove that it is reliable or accurate and it doesn't tell us how many information how much sorry i just said how many information how much information he would get from it so i wouldn't say it is true that it can yield the sufficient data maybe it can maybe it can't we don't know so i'd go with c it provides secondary data because that much i know is true number 11 why would it be unacceptable for Haldane to apply the findings of his research to all teenagers? Um, I don't remember which video it was, but I did say that in order to lower your margin of error, you have to use a bigger sample. So using um, repre a representative sample would help you in um, lowering your margin of error. Um, it would be unacceptable for Haldane to apply this finding, his findings to all teenagers because he's using students from his school only to conduct his research. And even if he does use a representative sample of his school's population, that still wouldn't cover or represent every teenager. I hope you understand what I'm saying. But let me know what you think. So i would go with D for number 11. Okay, let's go down. Let's move on. So items 12 to 15, this will, here will cover that. The scenario here would cover that. A recent meeting with the principal of Mansfield High School the Ministry of Education revealed, did I say that properly? Okay, let me start over. At a recent meeting with the, pre the principal of Mansfield High School, the Ministry of Education revealed that a check of the most recent census document show that some senior students of school have been irregularly attending classes. The ministry decided to hire a research company to investigate the likely reasons for the students' irregular um, attendance. Now, number 12 asks us, or says, the most suitable type of study which can be, which the company could use to conduct this research is survey, interview, experiment, or observation. Now, what are they trying? They're supposed to investigate the likely reasons for the students' irregular attendance. So I would go with interviews, I guess, because, or perhaps surveys. You wouldn't, if you were trying to find out if they were being, or they had irregular attendance, I would go with, observation but you're trying to find out why the why so i would go with either survey or interviews and for most part interviews seem seems more plausible to me number 13 which of the following types of sampling methods would best suit the ministry's purpose Um, I would go random sampling. Which of the following must the research company consider when selecting a sample? How aware this rep the respondents are Accuracy of the census documents, average number of respondents, how well it res represents the population. I would say D, how well it represents the population. That's very important when conducting a research. 
and when choosing a sample number 15 which of the following would be the most reliable source of secondary data for this study principal logbook student report cards or books student attendance registers or letters for of excuse from parents i'd go with the student attendance registers All right, number 16 to 20, it's an extract. Read the following extract carefully, then answer item 16 to 20. The boy, okay. The boy come back home for a few days, holidays, holiday, see some crabs Crosby have in a barrel. This is a, this is a son, this is a son. Dad, what are those things there? Talking like Englishman. Crosby ain't tell him nothing. When he poke his finger in the barrel and the crab catch hold of him, he bawl. Pa, the crab, the crab. A well-educated boy, yes? Lawyer, economist or something. Um, this was taken from The Wine of Astonishment by Earl Lovelace. Yup. Which of the following expressions, that's number 16, contains syntactical features common to Caribbean English Creole? A well-educated boy, what are those fangs? Pa, the crab, the crab, or talking like Englishman? I would say talking like Englishman. Um, I wouldn't go with A because probably that would fit under Caribbean in st Caribbean standard English rather than the English Creole. Number seventeen. What features of Caribbean English Creole grammar is used in the expression Crosby ain't tell him nothing? I would go with B, the use of two negatives or double negatives because ain't already implies that he's not telling him anything and then he say nothing. It's like Spanish. Um, if I'm going to say I don't have anything, usually in Spanish you say no tengo nada, right? And no tengo nada means re literally I, I have nothing, nothing. Or I don't have nothing. Yes, I don't have nothing because the no already means I don't have it and you're saying nada at the end, so I don't have nothing. But in English, we usually say I don't have anything. Number 18, what attitude towards the boy is suggested by the narrator's statement? Talking like Englishman, Crosby ain't tell him nothing. Jealousy, frustration, disapproval, amusement. Sound kind of bad mind still, but um, I guess I'll I'll choose. Would it, would you say disapproval? Disapproval. I wouldn't go with frustration, and I wouldn't go with amusement. Would you say that he didn't approve of the way he was speaking? That's that's why he ignored him. All right.
I'm going to go with A, jealousy. But let me know what you think. Always like to hear your reasoning behind these answers. What does the extract suggest about the relationship between the boy's education and his use of language? His education allows him to speak properly. His education has influenced his language. As an economist, he speaks standard English. He speaks English Creole because he's an educated lawyer. That seems kind of condescending though. Um, I would go with his education has influenced his language. Number 20 says, what is suggested in the narrator's final statement, lawyer, economist, or something? He was unable to recall the correct information. He is not in awe of the young man's educational achievements. He does not think that the young man's profession is important. He does not care that the young man has become a professional. I would say he does not think the young young the young man's Jesus professional profession is important. He doesn't think that the young man's profession is important. Um, in the extract, we can pick up a lot of um, what's the word? Sarcasm, sarcasm. Lawyer, economist, or something. Well-educated boy, yes. Lawyer, economist, or something. He doesn't care what he is really. And that's why I even chose jealousy here, because the whole thing seems like he doesn't really care what he is or what profession he has or his career path he just doesn't speak like that and you just come back and talking like this no sir don't care what you are who you are yeah so items 21 to 25 Read the following extract from the poem carefully, then answer items 21 to 25. Sonny's letter. From Prison Jeb Avenue, SW2, England. Dear Mama, Good day. I hope that we have these... F I hope that when these few lines reach, reach you, they may find you in the best of health. I don't know how to tell you this, for I did make a solemn promise to take care of little Jim and try my best to look out for him. Mama, I really, I really did try my best, but nonetheless, sorry for tell you that poor little Jim get a race. It was the middle of the rush hour when all of a sudden a police van pull up, out jump three policemen, the whole of them carrying button. Then walk straight up to me and Jim. One of them hold on to me, said them taking me in. Jim tell him for Lego of me. Lego of him, sorry. From him do him not do nothing. Jesus, I have to read this in exam, you know. Just Lord. And him not teeth not even a button. Mama, I just couldn't stand up there and and not do nothing. So me joke when I'm one in I'm yeah. And him started to cry. Me hit him on him mouth and him start to shout. Me kick him in him shin and him start to spin. Me hit him on him chin and him drop on a bin and crash and dead. <laughs> Mama, don't fret. Don't get depressed and downhearted. Be of good courage till I hear from you. Adopted from Linton johnson son is letter wow this part though um reminds me of the thing now go mexico no more 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 cause a big fat policeman at the door 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 anyways let's continue what is the speaker's purpose for this letter to protest against police brutality and injustice, to 
apologize for being locked up along with Jim, to inform his mother of his current address and console her, or to tell his mother that he and Jim are in jail and to explain why. I would say D. The purpose of his letter was to tell his mother that he and Jim are in jail and he explained why. The register of the poem may be described as formal, intimate, frozen, sorry, intimate or consultative. I would say frozen. Yes. The frozen language register. is usually used in letters, legal documents, stuff like that. So for that reason, let's go with B, 22. Which of the following, this is 23, which of the following is not a purpose for which the writer uses Caribbean English Creole in the poem? to provide aesthetic pleasure to the reader, to serve as a vehicle for easy communication between inmates, to show that it is more suited than standard English to discuss the issues of racism and social injustice, or D, to persuade the reader that the issues of racism and social injustice deserve discussion. I would say to persuade the reader that the issues of racism and social injustice deserves discussion. Um, the reason I would say to persuade because the Caribbean English Creole creates an atmosphere where while discuss, discussing a serious situation, there is a bit of lightness to it and uh, humor, so it's more persuasive to me. 24. Based on the tone of the letter, the relationship between mother and son can be, can be described as 24. Affectionate. He sounds almost disappointed to tell his mother that he has failed because as he said he promised that he would look out for both Jim and himself and yet now they're in jail. In which of the following countries is Sonny most likely to be incarcerated? Um, it was there it was said up here but it wasn't spelled correctly correctly um let's go back here england so it's, it's a safe bet to guess that he is in england twenty six to twenty eight and it says the following conversation about a funeral service took place between these two persons in a shoe store in Jamaica. Read it carefully then answer items twenty six to twenty eight. Percy says I can't believe that Mavis gone, but I'm really glad she had a great funeral. Mildred says the kids and grandkids came from from foreign for the funeral. No, that's a question. So the kids and grandkids came from foreign for the funeral. Percy says, yes, ma'am. One of them talks so nice, like the people in the television shows. But the other one, poor Mavis must be spinning in her grave. Mildred says, what do you mean? Percy says, well, 
I couldn't understand a thing he was saying during the eulogy he was giving. All I could hear was, I and I this and I and I that. He should know that people don't talk so in church. Alright, so number 26. From Percy's statement, what are the two varieties of language most likely spoken by Mavis's grandchildren? So I'm, I'm going to say off the bat, the first child who she says talks nicely speaks standard English. The one that uses I and I this and I and I that Rastafarian man. So I would say standard English and the Rastafarian English for number 26. Twenty-seven. What does Percy's statement "He should know that people don't talk so in church" suggests? A. Percy does not like Mavis's grandson. Context is critical to the choice of code. There is a code reserved for only church, or only for church. Christians speak differently from others. All right. So D is not correct, and A is not. Correct. I don't think it's a case where Percy dislikes Macy's, Mavis's grandson. It's, I would go with B for number 27. B as in boy or balloon for number 27. Context. Context also means environment and situation when you're talking about communication studies. The environment, the situation, the context that you're speaking in or the where you are it it really matters how you speak or the choice of diction or lexicon that you choose when in a particular situation in formal settings it is encouraged that we use the standard english or in my case the standard jamaican english or the caribbean standard english whichever informal situations where it's acceptable in informal situations to use the creole in some cases number 28 which of the following technologies would not help to enhance the delivery of the eulogy a fax machine microphone musical accompaniment um, a projected slide presentation 28a like a yes no doubt about it a why are you going to do it a fax machine really when you when you're saying when you're delivering a eulogy like hey guys let me fax the eulogy to you if you want to read it with me no 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 don't think that's going to work so 28 i would go with a let's um move on to 29 to 31 29 says an english Creole may be defined as a language with limit with a a with limited linguistic functions be used by the poorest people in the society no that's kind of offensive though no c only understood by some persons in the society or d developed from contact between European languages and African languages. 29, D as in dog, developed from contact between European languages and African languages. Um, as per B, um, we have basilect, mesolect, and acrylect. Acrylect used by high society people, so they mainly use the standard English with no no insertion of the Creole, none whatsoever. Mesolect mixes the or middle could think about that as middle class used by middle class people, and they mix the English Creole with the um what you say this the standard English while basilect usually people of the lower class using or language of the lower class class you know only creole and sometimes it's not really understood by many it depends on the region you're in because in jamaica different parishes have a different creole and i know you've heard that one and 
have heard it it's true sometimes i don't understand the whole the whole creole but you know it's true but yes um this comes on the factors that influence um a, a person's language so that would be like history because history does play a big part of the um caribbean english standard english as well as the english creole where we came or africans came in contact with europeans and throughout the whole caribbean by interacting their languages were mixed or words were adapted from the african culture as well as european culture number 30 in which of the following expressions is the process of reduplication evident stepsister i water a wagwan chaka chaka house number 30 i would say d chaka chaka reduplication chaka chaka house 31 which of the following is not an element of the process of communication all right elements of communication that includes environment or context or situation you need a sender or encoder you need a channel or medium you need a receiver you know receiver or decoder also what is what else what else what else after you get the message what you want to do feedback feedback is another and uh, for that 31 i would choose a noise even though i would say facilitators and barriers are elements as well but noise would be a barrier and you know there are different types of noise like semantic noise that's when um people use words that you don't know really like big words let's say that you use big words and i don't really know what you're saying so that's semantic noise there is actual physical noise psychological noise and physiological noise physiological noise is where like you're hungry you can't think think about what someone else is saying to you because you're thinking about being hungry rather than what that person is saying psychological noise has to do with the cognitive um sense per, per se or really you thinking about other things or whatever is affecting you mentally rather than physio physiologically and you're not really saying what you're not paying attention to what is being said or coming to you so you're not interpreting what message that person is saying because you're being blocked by whatever is going on in your head or your mind so that's psychological what else physical noise would be like loud music loud sounds you know can't hear the person because of that or something is wrong with your phone you're not hearing the person because of that that's all physical noise so we're going down now to 32 33 all right so first of all i'm gonna guess that this is a woman girl and this is the man let's just say that the woman says oh look a wishing well she goes over to the wishing well and tosses a coin in um this tch i'm guessing he hisses his teeth so it's like and uh, he says you don't believe in those things do you the man says not any the woman says not anymore i wonder what wonder what she was wishing for all right so 32 the man's body language in box one indicates that he is he seems like he wants to know what what is this woman doing now so thrilled irritated supportive or indifferent he wouldn't I wouldn't say indifferent he seems concerned and he doesn't he doesn't seem supported or thrilled so I'd go with irritated
Number 33. The stimulus that leads to the conceptualization of the message in box one is the the well. Yes, because she says, ooh, a wishing well. Remember that? And then she heads over to the wishing well, to the well. So, yeah. Now, a communicative artifact in the conversation is the... The coin. I would say the coin. Let's see. Artifacts in language. I'd say the coin. Hold on. In communication. say Google not working with me here okay the basics of human communication artifacts are physical objects such as clothing homes and cars that indicate to others or a, others a person's personal and social belief and habits so I would say the coin because the sky the bag the shrub has nothing to do with the woman's intent to make a wish at the will so see the coin and i'm sticking with that number 35 says what kind of communication context is depicted in the conversation well it's not intercultural it's not intra personal because that would be within m within myself like i'm talking to myself so that's an intra personal conversation interpersonal now seems between two people small group would be two or more or more than two let's say more than two now which of the following words describes the man's tone in box four let's see box four is right here you don't believe in those things, do you? It's like, what an idiot woman. She really believes in those things? He's, he doesn't seem angry. He, I wouldn't say he's angry. I wouldn't say dismay and I wouldn't say consolation either. Like disdain. He doesn't. He, he's not buying that. Like, really woman? No. Nah. Number 37, an election campaign is taking place for a vacant par parliamentary seat. The candidates are willing to use every means at their disposal to win the support of the voting public. Which of the following features of nonverbal communication would candidates be least likely to use when giving speeches? waving their hands in the air, turning their backs to the audience, smiling at the woman in the audience, embracing a spouse or other family or close family member. So I would say turning their backs to the audience. Says least likely to do, right? Yeah, least likely to use this one. You don't turn your back to the audience when you're talking to people. That's just rude. <laughs> that sounds so judgmental, I'm sorry. 38. Which of the following verbal strategies would not help candidates to effectively get their message across? Sarcasm, statistics, pub, um, party slogans, public service announcements. Sarcasm. I'll go with sarcasm. For the most part, sometimes I don't get sarcasm. Like, per, pro, probably the people around me who use it is like bad at it, but I don't get, I don't get it sometimes. So cheers to whichever politician wants to use sarcasm and try to win an election okay 39 
websites established for the purpose of wooing voters. Remember Miranda and Ferdinand from um, the Tempest. Ferdinand was wooing Miranda. Um, voter, wooing voters would most likely include one video clips of the candidates' activities, a, um, two a link to a web page where donations may be made, or three a link to a social media website. The um, I'd say one and three video clips of the candidates activities you know you want to keep up with what the candidate is doing you know what you're up to where you at today and a link to the social media website yes so one and three for 39 is there any up top no i'm coming i'm going down now so number 40 that's where we are now, the following scene shows the effects of inappropriate postings on social media by three persons. Read it carefully, then answer items 40 to 43. Unemployable due to stupid personal stuff I put on my Facebook page. This woman says, me too. And this man's card says, for me, it was an embarrassing YouTube video. know some people be clowning anyways 42 which of the following is a result of inappropriate use of social media a loss of family time be rejection by employers c damage of the character's reputation or d access access by future employers to the internet damage of the character's reputation for that that per person one can't get a job i think that's what it says let's go back up unemployable due to the stu to stupid personal stuff i put on my facebook page me too so yeah personal you damage your reputation solely so you can't get jobs for that a lot of other things happen after that so 41 the scene suggests that inappropriate postings can be made by young people only persons of different ages only the three characters in the cartoon i don't think that uh, that's what you know oh my god it's not it's a message for the general public but they're using three characters so i wouldn't say it's just for those three characters because posting inappropriate stuff on your pages can have um terrible consequences for me for you other people as well so i wouldn't go with c and here d seems like the answer of different person different ages and genders the fact that they included genders because there's a male there are two males and a female i would go with d because yeah it's like dude. 41 i'd say d 42 what general message do the nonverbal artifacts contain a convey whoa jesus learn to read girl the characters may have um the characters have different treasured items the characters with the least needs is a woman the characters are unemployable and in need of money and that the members of the public are giving the characters donations. I would say the characters are unemployed and in need of money, 42. Yes, you know, that's why they're begging per se, let's say that. They need money. They're unemployed and apparently unemployable. That's what he says. Unemployable. Which of the following could be considered the artist's purpose for depicting the scene? To show that social media are dangerous, to warn against indiscriminate use of social media, 
to ridicule persons addicted to using social media or to show that social media are a sign of the end of times that's a bit drastic these are that's that's just extra so what we say hyperbole so um i would say 43b as is in boy yes or balloon to warn against indiscriminate use of social media Forty-four to forty-five. A student submitted the following draft conclusion for her expository essay on types of luxury cars. If you're going to buy a luxury car, you could carefully consider what you want. There are various brands of luxury cars on the market, market, Cadillac, Infiniti, Volvo, Land Rover, Lamborghini, Porsche, Mercedes-Benz, Lexus, BMW, Audi. Some luxury cars can damage the environment and then or children would suffer the consequences. 44. The purpose of the second sentence is to let's see what's the second sentence so if you're going to buy a car a luxury car you must carefully consider what you want and then the second sentence says there are various brands of luxury cars on the market and then starts listing them cadillac infinity volvo land rover lamborghini porsche mercedes-benz lexus bmw and last one they listed was audi and it says to show off the student's knowledge of luxury cars, list the cars from most to least popular, most to least luxurious. Present present a list of cars for the readers to choose from, or to have the readers carefully consider various brands of luxury cars. I'm on the fence here with B and C. No, not B and C. Yes, B and C. All right, no, it's, I would go with, C. what, present a list of cars for the reader to choose from. But these aren't the only, you know, luxurious cars on the market, but I don't think you can list them all, she could list them all. I don't know. I would say C, yes. To present a list of cars for the readers to choose from. Various brands of. Or could it be D, to have the readers carefully consider various brands of luxury cars? Have the readers carefully consider all various. It doesn't. D doesn't limit us to only. Alright, I'm going to go with D. Because D doesn't limit us to only, um, what are you calling this? Only the cars the student listed, right? It's giving us options to consider more cars. So I'd go with the D. Because I don't think her intent was to, you know, say these are the only luxury cars or luxurious cars, so you have to choose from one of these. No. 45. What is the writer's aim in the last sentence? The last sentence says some luxury cars can damage the environment and then or children would suffer the consequences. To express the main idea of the paragraph, to convey the concluding idea of the paragraph, to focus the paragraph on environmental con conservation or to provide details to help the, cho the reader choose a luxury brand. Okay, again, I'm at B or C, B or C. Um, to convey the concluding idea of the paragraph. First of all, we, we didn't, I wouldn't go with B. We didn't start off talking about, you know, the environment or anything like that. I would say C to focus the paragraph on a, um, environmental conservation.
would you say this is debatable though let me know but i'll choose c 45 c yeah so i guess 45 is the last question so if you're hearing this that means you made it to the end of the video so thank you for watching and you know what to do subscribe like you know go to my instagram go follow under at young underscore genius underscore c you know what to do bye bye